Here comes my friend Dan. He's got a YouTube channel called Adventure Man Dan. He does a lot of spear fishing. And to do spear fishing, he needs his motor running. Well, today his motor's not running. So today we are going to tear apart a two stroke motor, figure out what's wrong with it, and fix it. Clark's gonna help me out today. He's the man. Ain't that right, Clark? <laughs> well, let's find out. Let's see if it runs. Clark said I rode over, but hopefully I'll be motoring back. Well, let's look into this and find out what's not working. Start out, tell me what the symptom was, last time it worked, how it died, uh, give me the history of it. So it usually is a one pull, one start engine, really great. Um, but recently, you know, I would go to start it, it would start for a minute, and then it would slowly start dying at a very consistent rate. And then there'd be no pull start, nothing would really get it going again. Uh -huh. But I found when I put it up on my boat for a couple days and came back to it, it might start up again. It might be fine for a little bit. The last time this happened, I went to leave my boat, one pull, one start, immediately going, nothing wrong with it. Uh -huh. Got up on the plane, was going full boat, and uh, they just did this very consistent, wow. So, it can't be the spark plugs, I don't think. It might be the air, but we doubt that. And you think it might be the fuel, which I think makes the most sense. Yeah, sure. Well, um... Easiest way to check for fuel. Let's actually start with the more basics because, you know, other people have different problems. So let's look at the engine a little bit. This is your basic two-stroke engine. Carburetors are usually on the front of a two-stroke engine. A four-stroke, it'll be over here to the side. And all of this bluish metal is the carburetor. Uh, we'll probably have to take it off if it's a fuel problem to clean it up. But first thing you always wanna do, just to help you diagnose it later, is squeeze the fuel ball. This is like a fuel pump, and you, if it's just firm right away, or firms up and then doesn't go anymore, you know that it's not leaking fuel, and you know that it's not leaking fuel inside the carburetor. That can happen. Uh, it dies a little differently than he described, but um, the thing will rich out. It'll get too much fuel and die that way. Uh, and it's common. Uh, the other thing is it's not getting fuel, fuel starvation, and that seems to be the problem. But since we don't want to go tearing things apart that we don't, you know, need to tear apart, what we want to do is first verify it's not an electrical problem. And the common electrical problems are something to do with the CDI system, the actual thing that makes the electricity for the spark, or just fouled spark plugs since it's a two-stroke, or very common, anything to do with the kill switch. Sometimes the kill switches will just say, don't run, <laughs> even though you have the switch in the on position. So if you think it's fuel, a good thing to do is get yourself a little bit of fuel, and we're gonna do this in the syringe, and just shoot it in there. And if we get a little bit of a fire out of it, then we know it's fuel. So first off, okay, that's pretty dead. Ah. Can you tip that up? And I'm just gonna squirt it right into the engine, right into the carburetor. And we got to burn wow. that amount of fuel. And it didn't burn efficiently. It would have burned longer if it was carbureted properly. But we now know spark plugs are good, electric's good. The system is just having fuel starvation. And pretty easy way to verify that. So let's tear it apart. And I kind of make this up as I go along. So uh, this is this is real, people. I'm not uh, this isn't staged, so we don't know what's wrong with the engine right now. And I don't know how to get it apart yet. <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> okay, this will be a lot of a lot of cut out, you know, but yeah. maybe fast action. And the montage, this will get fixed a lot sooner. Yeah. <laughs> One, no? That is not going to fit. Oh, 
I got gotcha. you. As the as the bolt comes back out, it's gonna push up against it. And... Yeah. But I can loosen them, and then I can probably do it with my fingers. Okay. Well, it's gonna take a little while just because of. There we go. Cause it's a mercury. Good. Okay. I'm just gonna cut it a little bit. Uh -huh. Here, there's no way we can lose these ones now. All right. Now, how do I get this out? This is the biggest problem, and it's always mercuries. I've never um, had this with others. Um, Emily, dear, I'm going to need my metric open ends, the ones in the beige um, bundle that you bought. All right. This handle right here. No, no, no. I mean, this little screw right here. I'm like, what is that there for? I wonder. But we got to get this out to get this out. Yeah. Because this is well, going to have to come back. Can we get back. this little rod out where it is right now, maybe? Um, probably. Don't. Go. Scout pulls. Thank you. Let's keep it dry. It cracks me up his dinghy and the little engine he's got. Little, the, the British flywheel. Seagull. Yeah. They were designed to be used once and thrown away. Yeah, in World War uh, World War II, right? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Yeah, like 50, 60 years later? Oh no, they kept making them after the war. Yeah. But the design was for the invasion, period. Yeah. And so they, they just nobody made small outboards. That's why they, the military had to have one made because there just weren't any oh, really? to buy. And people started using them and some people just get hung up on bad engineering and want to keep with it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, they're bad, they're horrible by today's standards. Yeah. For, but it, you know, if, if it's what you like, okay, hope you're gonna be able to get them out of there. No, I'm probably just gonna cut it open when we're done. Okay. Actually, I probably should have done some family. family. Don't. The problem with Mercury's is they take other people's engines nowadays, and then they add their custom features like this, mm -hmm. but they didn't design the engine around it and they just make it work once. They just jam it all together and it just makes it so hard to work on them. For my next outboard, what would you recommend? I'm looking at something around uh, uh, like 15 horsepower or so. Well, I'll tell you what, we are buying when we get home. I'm gonna make a better recommendation than that, eh? Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm giving up on carburetors and I'm gonna take a risk and I'm going with a small fuel injected engine. And Suzuki makes one that's very light. And um, they're 15 and they're 20, or, and they're 10, 15, and 20 are exactly the same motor with a different program in the computer. So they all weigh exactly the same. They're exactly the same. They're really? different prices. This is yeah. common. Well, I've so seen if, a lot of like 15 horsepower are the exact same size as, size as my engine. And a lot of people have said it's just a different carburetor. Yep. Yeah. But with the fuel injected, it seriously is just, well, maybe bigger injection nozzles, Yeah. but it's the computer on board that's, you know, because when you have fuel injection, you have to have a computer. Yeah. That's really the, the you know, the important difference. And it basically just says, you only paid for a 15, so I'm stopping here. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so you can be able to, you know, buy the, buy the smallest one and then hack through it more or less? I doubt it. And yeah. uh, with a carbureted, it is worth it. That one over there is actually an eight that yeah. I brought up to be a 10. Okay. by changing the carburetor. And it costs the same to buy a carburetor to bring it up at just buying the big one, but then I had two carburetors, so I have a smaller carburetor available when I have problems. Yeah, it's yeah, a spare, that's cool. Okay. And oh, they just use zip ties, that's interesting. Yeah, they, they're they not reusable, that's the problem. The, the yeah. springy ones I like the best because you just pinch them with a, a rent, uh, plier, take them right off, there we go. That's free now. And I will need to cut this off. But here we are. All right, anyway, here's your carburetor. Let's uh, drain the float and then we'll learn a little about what's going on here. Then we'll work, take that off. No fuel in it. Don't put this one in your thing yet. How's that come off? 
just come off. I think it's just, just stuck. Let's see, there should be fuel coming out, and there isn't. So something is plugged up. And that, that's that other side of the, uh, the float that I was talking about. So no fuel yeah. is getting into it. So we know the problem. Now we have to fix it, which means I have to get it in the carburetor. So I'm gonna have to take this off. Would you agree though that uh, two strokes are better than, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, two strokes are better than four strokes for you know marine applications, whatnot, and no. cruising? You prefer a four stroke? Any day. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah. They're heavier, so you yeah. gotta be able to deal with that. But yeah. they're a much, much better engine. They're uh, fuel efficient, which when you go off cruising, cruising for a long ways matters. I was like three months without any way to get anything. And I just carried 12 gallons worth of fuel. Yeah. I was fine that whole time. Yeah. Two stroke guys were like begging fuel off me. And Okay, we're gonna take the carburetor up on the boat where it's a little safer and strip it down and uh, figure out what's wrong with it. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna tear it apart. What we found so far is there's no fuel in the float bowl, and I'll go into detail about how a carburetor works once we get it apart. And I can't blow in to the, uh, where the fuel should go. So there's a blockage of some kind, and I'm pretty sure it's the needle valve in the float assembly, but we're gonna tear it apart and find out. They put a jet right in here. This would be the main jet. Don't think that's our problem. Feels clear. Leave that right there. This is going to be the trick. Figure out how to get it apart. Oh, there we go. That's how it should come apart. Okay. This is the float assembly. That's an odd one. That's your problem right there. Okay. A little bit about how carburetors work. So here's our carburetor, and its whole job is to meter fuel into the engine as air goes into the engine. It has in it something called a throttle plate, and when you give it the gas, it opens this up to let more air through, and when you close this down, it lets less air through. And when it lets more air through, you get more flow of air, and um, it's kind of like blowing over the top of a soda straw. When you blow over the top, it'll suck the fluid up. So it sucks the fluid up from the bottom of the carburetor and adds it in a very metered way. They've been making these for a long time and they do a darn good job. Not as good as fuel injection, but a darn good job. And how they, uh, all the calibration kind of depends on this little bowl of fuel in the bottom, having exactly the right level of fuel in it. And that's monitored by this. This is called the float and it floats on the fuel. And when it comes up too high, it shuts off the flow of fuel. And when it drops down, it asks for more fuel from the fuel tank. Well, that sometimes can fill with fuel, but this one feels like it would be nicely floaty. The bowl looks nice and clean, but this is what it actuates on, on this carburetor, and it pushes this little uh, needle valve up and down, and it feels like that's plugged up to me. So I'm gonna take out the needle valve. Clean it a little bit. I'm gonna blow through it again. Now I can blow through it. Gas tastes terrible, especially two-stroke. I'll put the needle valve back in. And when I'm holding this up, I shouldn't be able to blow through. And when I let it down a little bit, I should. So we've just fixed the problem. All it was on wow. this engine is this needle valve was jammed up in there, probably by some gunge. And you notice last time I had to pull it out and this time it falls right out nicely. It looks clean in there. I don't know what it was, but there was something keeping it from moving. So I'm very confident if we were to put this all back together right now, it would work a charm. But since we're talking about it, and because Dan is going to go off to wonderful places all by himself and needs to be able to fix this in the future, we'll talk a little more. Okay, this area here is, is like that soda straw tube, and you can kind of see in there a little brass tube. That goes up and it becomes this brass tube, and that's where the fuel, when the air blows around it, uh, it goes through this restricted area, 
causes um, higher velocity, which makes lower pressure, which sucks the fuel out. And how the fuel is controlled, how much can come, is with this. These are called jets. And this carburetor is quite different than like most all of them. I'm not taking the jet out because it doesn't want to come out and I don't think it's a problem. But if you see in there, there's an itsy bitsy tiny little hole and that has to be very, very clean. Uh, if that was restricted, you would the engine runs and probably idles fine, but won't have any high end performance. So you clean that out either by spraying a carburetor cleaner in it, or I like using a guitar string since I'm a guitar player and that makes a very nice little pick to get in there and clean them out. Uh, if you take it out, you hold it up to the sun and you can look through it, you should see a, a round hole, not an obscured hole. And of course, blowing through it. And it, it just sounds right to me. So the fuel goes in through these little holes, gets metered through that, and then goes up the rest of the assembly. Uh, Two-stroke carburetors are pretty simple. The only other thing that, that bears mention here with this uh, carburetor, and this is different between two-stroke and four-strokes, is two-stroke carburetors have a fuel pump right on them. It's because of the nature of the two-strokes. Uh, the flow of air is very pulsy, and it uses that pulse to pulse the backside of a diaphragm, and then the other side can pump fuel. So they're using that energy to pump fuel. On a four-stroke, there's actually a, a pump that runs off the motor, just like on a car. Uh, that's probably it for carburetors and fuel system. There's one more thing I want to talk about with two-strokes, and we'll take a look at it later, so we'll insert the footage where it is. There's a one-way valve beyond the carburetor on the engine side of it. Usually you have to dig a little deeper and take off some more parts to get to it. And it's like a little reed and a little slot and it goes this way so when the the engine sucks air it goes and then when the engine goes the other way it it closes off and i won't go into in this video how two stroke actually works in the crank but i, I want to mention it from a maintenance point of view if your two stroke runs great once it starts but is a bear to start take that assembly out look at it. It's probably got a little bit of grit. It's not letting it close all the way. Or it's just worn a little bit so it's not closing all the way. It has to close all the way. And you take it apart and clean it. You can take it apart and turn this little thing around and put it back the other way if it's bent. And hard starting two strokes are almost always that and almost nobody seems to know about that. So when you know about that, you fix that, clean the carburetor, you can take a car, an engine from like the 50s and it probably will work. Two strokes are really tough. That's a good thing about them. Bad thing about them is they're terribly inefficient. 25% of all the carbon that goes into them comes out unburnt. They're, uh, uh, they pollute and they burn a lot of fuel compared to a four stroke. So I prefer the four stroke, but to each of their own. One last test here. See, that was on that way. This one went around here. Oh, let's look at this. Oh, that just couldn't work because there was no fuel to pump. Okay. So I'm pretty confident that's probably okay because it was all working before. Okay, now we just figure out how to put the carburetor back on the engine and it should start. I'm gonna have to watch this video to... <laughs> is not going to be fun. Never, uh, never buy a Mercury again. <laughs> They're just the worst. Okay, I would like the nuts back, please. Yep. Oh, Emily, could you could you get us a small wire tie? Mm -hmm. Just one, please. Uh, that's one? Um, not tiny. One of the white ones. White? Yeah. Don't drop. Don't drop. That's a nifty trick. I like that. Oh, it's perfect. 
Yeah, perfect. Yep. It started. It started. That's the one. I want you to get the other one. It's on your side. Oh, yeah. Should be easier to get to. Wait, you actually want me to repair my own engine? <laughs> right I'm gonna just do this let's put the rest of it together okay I need those screws now are the dikes up here somewhere uh, oh there they are I see them underneath the tool uh, the sockets under, uh, between the two bags, yep, okay. Under the sockets. Thank you. All right. This is crazy, so we didn't even get a chance to see what was, uh, what was blocking it, but. Oh, it just that it was blocked. Yeah. These were screws. Why do I have nuts? They were nuts, okay. Oh yeah, they were nuts. Ah, I have just remembered them being screws. Um, okay. Actually, do you wanna, oh, you already got the bar in? Cool. Yeah, I got that a lot. I had a lot of time while you were trying to put that nut on. I put all the rest of it assembled and put that little linkage I did my back taxes, in. Man. <laughs> World hunger? Yeah, it's not a thing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one's going to be fun. Don't wiggle anything. Nope, that's not going to work for us. I might have to do my paper towel trick. What's your paper towel trick? Well, you jam a paper towel into there, and then this can't go in all the way, and then you can Ooh. use this as a little tiny wrench. It's really good for starting screws. Yeah. I just can't reach it any other way. Emily dear, can I have a paper towel? Just a little corner of one. Just whatever you do, don't drop that. It's not yeah. in. If you can get it started, that's cool. Oh, we could have used some paper products you had here. Thank you. Uh -huh. I definitely turned it six degrees, actually. Oh, it's, is it started? No, well, I'm, okay. I mean, like I, I rotated it six degrees. Oh, well. So not a lot. <laughs> But it it's still barely in there. If it didn't start, no, it didn't start yet. So what would be the main advantage to a two-stroke? Their, their durability, that you can flip them and start them right back up, or what do you say? They're lighter. Oh, really? The power to weight ratio is way higher. But the fuel to weight ratio, you know, if you had the fuel for yeah. a few months, and then you lose that. But you don't have to carry all the fuel with you all the time. So yeah. where you find them is in things like um, weed whackers and, um, you know, things you have to carry around and have a lot of power in a small thing. Yeah. Chainsaws. You'll never see a four stroke chainsaw. So, first I'm going to listen to this. Okay. Okay. He lives. That's what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> it was awesome. You know, he showed me how to do it. Really simple. Um, he went through the steps. You know, diagnosing it was very clear. And I, something else I just didn't tell you is I had several other people start to help me, huh? but I could tell very quickly they didn't know what they were talking about, they were just guessing, and really they were just throwing out stuff so that way after I maybe figured it out and fixed it, they could have sat back and said, hey great, you finally figured it out, you know. <laughs> but Clark actually put through the work, so Clark, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to run away now. <laughs> well, let's see if it gets up to plane. Yeah.